Hey guys, what is going on? It is Cruzavi here and I welcome each and every one of you to a brand new tutorial video for our channel, The Guide. And today's topic is going to be build-up play. The foundations for a good build-up, so more on the beginner side of things, but if you're an advanced player, there might also be some valuable information for you in this video. So I want to show you some main principles and default build-up strategies that allow you to establish yourself in the gold ranks, but then also climb higher into those elite ranks. Before we get into that though, a quick reminder guys that of course our platform The Guide Plus is still up and running and the community is growing on there. On The Guide Plus we're releasing four pieces of content every single week, articles and videos not only on the newest meta gameplay tips but also on FIFA Ultimate Team, recently a review on Joao Felix for example and also tactical guides, tips on the mental aspect of the game. So if you're interested in that, then definitely go ahead, check out the first link in the video description. And now please enjoy the video. So when it comes to build up play, a lot of players struggle to find a concept, kind of a rhythm for their build up and that leads to a very chaotic game style and therefore lots of unforced errors and situations that would be easily avoidable if you would just follow a few principles and so many players just lose ball possession all the time and they don't really get into that final third consistently in order to attack. That's why I would like to establish three main principles for you guys to follow in your build-up. Note that these are for default build-up situations, not when you're counter-attacking because obviously then you're trying to play forward as quickly as possible. But if you have a slower type of build-up, then the first rule you want to follow is using your entire team to push forward together because lots of players just use their strikers and then maybe their wingers and their wingbacks, their CDMs, their central midfielders, they are not in the game at all, they don't use them because playing forward too quickly once again. So you always want to remember to use these players, especially wingbacks are very important for your build up to get that width and to get that safety and also then obviously your central midfielders are the backbone of a solid build up. You should include them a lot because then you have all your attacking options pushing forward and then you have all of them available with your CDMs who usually also have very good passing stats. The second principle is building triangles. You always want to try and have your players positioned in triangles so that you then can play around any opposing defenders that are trying to pressure the ball. Because if you always have two passing options available, left and right, then it's extremely hard for the opponent to cover both. This is especially useful on the wing. We will take a look in detail on that later, but also in the center with your strikers and your central midfielders, you can build those triangles. They're everywhere on the pitch and you should always be on the lookout for them. And the third and final principle is using available space by playing into that. So if you have that wider look on the pitch and are not just focused on your attacking players and getting forward so quickly, then you will see that often space is opening up in the center for your central midfielders or for your wingers and wingbacks. And then you want to use that space by not playing normal passes, normal ground passes, but instead using the through ball button for those passes because then your player can push into the ball, he can accelerate already and then you can use that available space as quickly as possible in order to push your entire team forward. Now looking at the first default build-up strategy for wide formations, we have the wing triangle and this one consists of the wing back, the winger and then your CM or CDM of that specific side. And this triangle is extremely useful for a safe build-up because since you're on the wing you cannot be attacked from every angle so you know where the danger is coming from and then for the opponent it's usually quite hard to cover both your winger and 
your CM when you have the ball with your wing back, so you're very safe then. If you play a ball to your winger, then you can always just let it bounce back to your wing back when the opponent is putting pressure, and all around it's extremely difficult for the opponent to win the ball back, so this gives you a very solid foundation for your build-up. The second default build-up strategy that I really like to use, probably my favorite one, is finding your CMs in midfield. So this means that when you have the ball on the wing, a lot of times your CMs will be positioned around the halfway line and then have some space available in front of them. And if you use a through pass in order to play into that space, suddenly you have your CM in a very good position to deliver the ball to your strikers and you will have open passing lanes available most of the time. Let's take a look at this specific example because it showcases it really well. I get the ball with my winger and if I now just play a pass forward to one of my two strikers, then I'm in this very boring and easy to defend two on three or two on four situation where all I can do is initiate one, two passes and then somehow try to beat the center backs. But if instead, I take a wider look and I see that Pogba is open right across from me and I have lots of space available with him. I can then play a through pass to him and that leads to me still having both striker options available up front but also being able to push forward with Pogba and that gives you new situations with a lot more attacking power I feel like because you're not so limited in your options and you can you know go for different passes or just dribble with your center mid like I do right here with Pogba and then eventually decide which option you want to go for. And then last but not least, the third default strategy is creating width and space with your wingbacks. And this one is probably the one I use most because the situation just occurs so often and I see lots of players who don't make use of that. So if you play from one side to another or just in general, you have the ball in the center of the pitch, then oftentimes your wingbacks have a lot of space available in front of them because the opponent first needs to shift his defenders to the other side and so you can play a through ball into a wide open area and then often even follow up with another through ball down the sideline to one of your wingers uh, who's making a run but even if that's not possible you can push forward with your wing backs in order to create lots of space and just in general from here you have a ton of options available and just gives a new dimension to your game instead of staying central and playing forward through the center where often it gets very hectic and difficult to keep the ball especially if you are numbered and you can avoid that by doing this default strategy. To sum it up, I want to say that obviously all these default strategies also go hand in hand with each other and if you combine them then you should have a very good and stable build up concept available to yourselves but obviously you need variation in your game. You can't always go for the same passing rhythm for the same passing combinations. You also need to surprise your opponent sometimes. So mix it up, also throw some counter attacks in there. Maybe fake that you're going for that through pass into the open space for your wing back and instead turn into the middle again and then play a driven pass to one of your strikers, stuff like that. So definitely stay variable guys and then I think you should have lots of success in your attacking play. That's it for today's video guys, I hope you enjoyed it and were able to take something away from it. If so, then please leave a like for the video because that helps us out a ton and don't forget to subscribe if you don't want to miss any further video of the guide in FIFA 21. I'll better talk to you in the next one. See you then, much love, peace. <laughs>